All right, let's talk about baits for Nature Coast snooking. Some, some folks like and prefer to use live bait and probably some of your better baits for our area if you were going to use live bait would be small finger mullet, live small finger mullet, live pinfish, or jumbo size live shrimp. And you know, you would present it. Most, most of the time I wouldn't recommend putting it under a cork or anything. I'd recommend free lining it. Uh, good quality hook. This is a 3 uh owner hook and it's a bait style offset hook. So that, that's about the size I would use. And um, you know, I would just free line it. Again, tying this hook on with a loop knot. And your shrimp, I would hook from the tail and bring out toward the front and pitch it. And the pinfish, always right behind the dorsal. Same with the small finger mullet. I wouldn't get anything bigger on the finger mullet than probably six or eight inches would be ideal for snook in this area. Um, and, you know, of course, have a good quality live well. Keep your bait lively for snook. I haven't had luck, much luck of those biting anything dead. So, you know, lively baits are the best. Now, some other lures, subsurface lures, slow sinkers, something that mimics a small bait. Um, this lure here is a suspen suspending lure and uh, very good, very good size to look like a small pinfish or um, you know, a little shad or something in the river, especially when you're up there toward the fresh waters up in Kings Bay. In the springtime, we have a shad hatch and they're all in the river and you'll sometimes see bass busting as far as, you know, snook too. Usually small school snook, but good suspending bait. I wouldn't suggest using this in real, real shallow water. Uh, if you do, get it working fast, but if this was something that I would throw near a good drop and just let it fall and just give it a couple good jerks, you know, let it fall all the way down a midwater column, working it back up. Now another good lure, soft plastic that mimics a, a mullet, has a good quality heavy duty hook. This would probably be a real good big snook bait. Um, this you can pitch and throw up in real shallow water and get it moving. It would look like a small mullet running for deeper water. Has good action on the tails, uh, gives it gives it a lifelike appearance. Uh, the colors I choose for something like that would be a mullet color, either brown and silver, blue or silver, um, or black and silver, such as this. That looks like a small mullet. The good thing about using artificials too, it allows you to cover a lot more water. You know, if you're if you're using live bait, you're throwing to a specific point just about every time. If you know the fish are there, that's good. But if you don't know and you're searching, lures are going to get you there a lot quicker. And you know, if you get them dialed in and next time they're, you know, snubbing at you on artificials, then try your mullet or something like that. Um, another great bait for snook I've had a lot of success on is a shrimp imitation. Uh, this, this works real well. It doesn't have to be a super big one. Uh, you know, elephants eat peanuts. This, this lure will give you a great presentation and you could fish it in you know, one area and keep working it over and over again and letting it fall or presenting it different ways, letting it fall, twitching it fast, twitching it slow, keeping it right there. Um, something I learned fishing down south for snook, if you're gonna fish at night around docks and you're pitching up toward a dock and sometimes you can see the snook actually laying there in the light, don't throw right into the light. You want to throw just to the outside and off of the light and make your bait stay right there on the edge of it in the darkness. It looks more natural that way. Um, you know, if you put it right in the light, a lot of times they're going to scrutinize it and they're going to see that that's not real. If it's over there in a little bit in the darkness, they think it's one sneaking past them, a lot of times they'll go and get it. Now there's also another technique if you're going to fish up in our springs or somewhere and you think there are snook under the dock, is to cast and skip your lure up underneath the dock and it's good to practice it's uh, it's a great technique but uh, get out there and one day to set at a dock what you want to do is it's a little bit of a sidearm cast and you'll throw the bait and actually you want it to hit just in front of the dock but with enough sidearm action that the lure will skip and usually bounce two or three skips underneath the dock it's nearly impossible to hit that and send it in there so it's kind of a sidearm cast skipping this lure up underneath the dock and letting it fall. Uh, snook during the daytime do like to hang around structure and shade and under overhangs and things like that or deep down in the water column. 
another great bait, especially in the morning or at night, is a topwater plug. Uh, snook will hit topwater plugs, and it's a great strike. If uh, those of you have caught a lot of snook and never had one come up and blow up on a plug, it's, it's awesome. Um, you know, but I recommend this at night and early morning hours. Sometimes right at dusk in the evening, you know, low light conditions on your top water plugs. Some of your better colors in our area are gonna be some something that would look like a needlefish. Snook like to eat needlefish in our area. So green and silver, blue and silver, uh, those are great colors. Or if it's at night, you know, the old silver, silver redhead white, that's always a classic, that'll work too. Now last but not least, this uh, is probably what I have caught most of the snook that were unintentional on. Uh, it's a Eppinger Gold Spoon, and Johnson Gold Spoons work just as well. But this is, this is a go-to bait when we're targeting redfish here in the Nature Coast. And a lot of times when you're targeting redfish during the warmer months, the snook may be on a nice point. Again, we're talking current, deep water, drop off rocky points and you're out there looking around for redfish and it looks redfishy and you're just like great man and you pitch it over there and you're in a spoon is this a steady retrieve uh, this you can fish it very shallow but you again you have to get that method down of shutting that bell with your hand and stopping it and getting your hand on the reel and getting this moving if you fish this very shallow you're going to end up losing it uh, the rocks here love to eat gold spoons um, you get it hung up, sometimes it's too shallow to get over there to get it. Or the other thing, there could be fish there and you go up to get your gold spoon and you're going to spook them off. So get that, get that casting, shutting the bell by hand method down, stopping it, getting your retrieve. Work the spoon with a steady retrieve. And like I said, too many times I've, I've thought it was a nice red fish, it's a hard thump, and then all of a sudden here comes this nice duck blowing up out of the water. So if I had to choose any of these for Nature Coast Fish and for Snook in the blind, it probably would be the Gold Spoon top choice. If you kind of know where they're at, I would say a soft plastic or a suspending bait. And uh, if you're just searching and you'd love to catch one on top water, remember early morning, late evening or at night, top water plugs. Now, those are some of my favorite baits. This one as a uh we had just seen here earlier in the show the snook that I caught this morning was on this bait. Um, chartreuse and glow. That's, you know, everybody has a favorite bait that they like and it's it's a comfort bait. You know, you got comfort food, you got comfort this and that. Everybody has a go-to bait. This one's always been one of my favorite for a lot of Nature Coast fish, but uh, that worked for me today. Uh, during the middle of the day, dark water, glow, chartreuse head, and uh, what I saw Again, if you can see it again, when we catch the fish, we got a big rock, we got current, we got a marker right there dropping off in the deep water. Threw this in there, let it let it fall, jigging it back up. Just like the little shad and bait fish that were hanging in there, and boom, we got the strike. So this would be another one of my go-to baits always. You know, it's, it's you can never have enough lures. And if you're gonna really go out and search, just don't use one, you know, try a bunch, because you're gonna find on a day-by-day -day basis it can change.